Last week, I did a radio interview, and my task was to respond to a video that uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, did. Uh, It was just a four-minute video on the issue of abortion, in particular, a a salvo against pro-lifers. Now, Bill Nye has uh, apparently had some, some... fame from uh, his role in a TV show, being a spokesperson for science. I don't know what his precise field is. Somebody told me it was mechanical engineering. It certainly wasn't biology and embryology based on some of the things he said here, but that's okay. Um, I don't dismiss a person's person simply because their credentials are not up to snuff given their topic, because it could be that people have a lot of intelligent sound things to say about issues or topics in fields where they are not formally trained. Uh, That would be me as well. I don't have a degree in embryology uh, or biology, but that doesn't mean that I can't weigh in on on things in a sound way. And so one has to assess the merits of the ideas. By the same token, just because Bill Nye is the science guy doesn't mean his ideas are sound. They have to be assessed. This is the essence of the Rhodes Scholar tactic in the tactics book, where you just don't take a scholar's word because he says it. You have to look at what he says. And sometimes scholars are in a unique position to weigh in on a matter. They have an insight into information that we just don't have, and we take them on their authority, that they know what they're talking about when they're speaking about something we don't have access to. However, much of the time, we do have, in principle, access to the details, and therefore, the tactic, the Rhodes Scholar tactic, is meant to encourage us to not be, shall we say, um, uh, blinded by the science guy, but rather look carefully at the rationale and see if we can assess the point of view on the merits. We look past the credentials. We see if there's something amiss. And in this particular case, there's a lot of a lot amiss. And sometimes people have asked, "Did you see those new videos by such and so, the new atheist, or this person, or that skeptic, or this author, or whatever?" And and so, what do you what do you say to that? As if the videos seem to be very compelling to some people, and now I've got to step up and answer it. I always approach these things the same way, just like I approached Bill Nye's piece, is I don't get angry, I don't get upset, I don't get nervous, I don't tuck my tail between my legs and run out. I just take the thing at face value and look at it piece by piece. And in this four-minute piece by Bill Nye, and I, that's N-Y-E, and uh, probably Amy will have this posted tomorrow, uh, a link to this. You can watch it for yourself. In fact, I tweeted on it last week and I said, hey, watch this and do your own assessment. That's all the tweet was. And then a couple of days later, after I did this interview, I tweeted again and posted the link to the interview to give my assessment. But I like for you guys to do the work yourself. All you need is a little methodology, but the simple methodology here is just take the points one by one, and ask yourself whether they are sound or not. And that's what I've done here. So let me give you the rundown. I'll tell you what Bill Nye said, and uh, then we can go from there. Just as an overview, his general complaint against pro-lifers, and specifically pro-lifer Christian types, because he does make a sideways shot, take a sideways shot at the Bible. You'll hear that in a moment or at least I'll read the text to you. I don't have the sound clips. Um, and so this is at, at Christians, and their, his concern is that we are woefully uneducated. We just don't have the facts. And he says this over and over again. And he laments the fact that here we are weighing in on a moral issue when we are scientifically illiterate about the details. Okay, so catch that. That's a little bit of a summary statement. He's frustrated because Christians are weighing in on ethical questions when they are woefully illiterate about the scientific facts. All right? Now, so with that foundation, uh, let me read the first paragraph, and here's what uh, Bill Nye says. Many, 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 many more hundreds of eggs are fertilized than become humans. 
Eggs get fertilized, I'm, and by that I mean sperm get accepted by ova a lot. But that's not all you need. You have to attach to the uterine wall, the inside of a womb, a woman's womb. But if you're going to hold that as a standard, that is to say, if you're going to say when an egg is fertilized, it therefore has the same rights as an individual, then whom are you going to sue? Whom are you going to imprison? Every woman who's had a fertilized egg passed through her? Every guy whose sperm has fertilized an egg and then it didn't become a human? Have all of these people failed you? It's just a reflection of a deep scientific lack of understanding, and you literally or apparently literally don't know what you're talking about. Close quote. All right, so let me see. Uh, let's take a look and see what's going on there in the first complaint, which ends by saying you literally don't know what you're talking about. Now, he starts with a statement that is a factual statement that is hard to take exception with. Many, 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 many more hundreds of eggs are fertilized that become humans. Well, actually, I have to pause there because do you notice the distinction here? He says that there are eggs that are fertilized that don't become humans. Now, what he means is, I think, based on what he just says, following that is that they don't attach to the uterine wall and they are flushed out. And so he asks the question then, if you're going to call that a human being, then who are you going to sue? Who are you going to put in jail? Now, to be honest with you, I have no idea why he introduced that question into this discussion, okay? Because it doesn't seem to pertain to anything significant that we're talking about. Um, his chief complaint is that pro-lifers haven't got their science right, and then he says a fertilized egg is not a human being. Many more hundreds of eggs are fertilized than become humans. That was his point. So fertilized eggs are not human beings. Now, why why are they not human beings, he says, because lots of them die in early stages of development. And secondly, they're not in the right location. You have to attach to the uterine wall, the inside of a womb, a woman's womb, is what he says. And the reason uh, we shouldn't take this approach is then who are you going to sue or punish for miscarriages? Okay, do you, do, do you see co coherence at all in this line of thinking? I actually don't, but what I do see is scientific inaccuracy for all of his concern that pro-lifers don't have their science right. Um, he re repeats the phrase fertilized egg a number of times, and yes, eggs do get fertilized, but when they're fertilized, they're not fertilized eggs. The egg disappears, the sperm disappears, there is something new there. The new thing is called a zygote. A zygote is the very first stage of a developing, guess what, human being. And by the way, that's basic embryology. We're not, I'm not bringing any religion in here. I'm just, in fact, let me cite you from Medical Embryology 7th edition. Uh, this is Sadler and Langman's Medical Embryology. Quote, the development of a human begins with fertilization, a process by which the spermatozoan from the male and the oocyte from the female unite, sperm and egg, to give rise to a new organism, the zygote. By the way, what kind of organism do you think that would be? What kind of, a zygote isn't a thing. It is a stage of development of something. It's what kind of zygote is it? It's a human zygote. It is a new organism, according to the textbook. It is a new human being. So Bill Nye is just wrong on his opening salvo. He is wrong about his science. You don't need anything else after fertilization for there to be a unique human being. Now, whether that human being should be afforded rights, that's a separate question. But notice it is not a scientific question. That is a philosophical question. And all he does is make a lame uh, attempt at addressing the question by talking about legal problems of suing and, uh, let's see, going to putting in prison. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. Let's just stick with the science, okay? And uh, it doesn't matter where the human being is in 
the fallopian tube or attached to the uterine wall, you don't determine what a thing is by where it happens to be located. Location can change. The thing still is what it is. And according to embryology, though not according to Bill Nye, the thing that exists after fertilization is a unique individual human being. All right? All right, let's take the second. Not doing so well so far, Mr. Nye. Second paragraph. And so, he says, when it comes to a woman's right with respect to their reproduction, so his and so is like, therefore, we conclude that when it comes to a woman's right with respect to reproduction, I think you should leave it to a woman. This is really, you cannot help but notice, he continues, I'm not the first guy to notice this or observe this. You have a lot of men of European descent passing these extraordinary laws based on ignorance. I'm not sure what laws he's referring to, because abortion is legal. But based on ignorance, sorry, guys, I know it was written or your interpretation of a book written 5,000 years ago, 50 centuries ago, makes you think that when a man and a woman have sexual intercourse, they always have a baby. But that's wrong. And so to pass laws based on that belief is inconsistent with nature. Okay, now this, he's gone from bad to worse in this one. Uh, First, he says, well, for the reasons he gave, which are unclear as to being sound in the first paragraph, we should leave it up to a woman uh, to decide. To me, this is like saying, when it comes to slavery, you should leave the question up to the slave owner. After all, the slave is his property. Instead, you have the situation where a lot of non-slave owners are trying to dictate to slave owners what rights they have over their own property. That's a parallel right there to what he's just said about abortion. The very thing at question, my friends, is whether the unborn is a human being who ought to be protected, regardless of what mom says. So to say, well, let's leave it up to mom to decide, um, ignores the issue, the very pointed issue. What is the status of the unborn? And presumes that it is completely the mother's choice, which is just to presume what you need to prove which means you're arguing in a circle at that point. But it gets it, it's more troubling because he says you have a lot of men of European descent passing these extraordinary laws based on ignorance. I don't know what they're ignorant of. He hasn't made that clear. But why should it matter that they are men of European descent? Um, Nye is a man of European descent. <laughs> Does this mean he has no right to speak out on the issue of abortion? All of the Supreme Court justices with Roe v. Wade were men. Does this mean that they are somehow have to recuse themselves from making a decision there? The f- simple fact is, friends, arguments do not have genders. The same arguments men offer regarding whether or not abortion is morally sound, a woman could offer. It's irrelevant. So here, here is a, a, a massive problem in reasoning. It's called a genetic fallacy. He's discounting the, uh, the reasoning based on the source, men of European descent. And then he fires this salvo. He suggests that the pro-life view is based on an interpretation of a book written 5,000 years ago. Um, I guess we could... Um, we can... Uh, <laughs> Uh, 5,000 years ago? No, it's like 2,000 to 3,500 years ago. So, all right. Well, I'm not going to fuss too much about the time. He's got the dates wrong for the Bible. But I do not know anybody that argues against abortion based on the Bible. That's a straw man. We aren't arguing on the Bible. We are arguing from embryology and science and philosophy and morality. We are not arguing from the Bible. Um. And just because a book is old, of course, doesn't mean its ideas are false. That's another example of the genetic fallacy. Again, one must address the ideas proper and not dismiss them due to age. Uh, I might note that science is guided a lot by Aristotle's laws of logic, and those go back, at least his formulation, about 2,500 years. Age has nothing to do with it. Another faltering. All right, let's take the next next paragraph. Notice what I'm doing here, friends. I'm just taking his statements one by one, 
or in groups, it has points, and I'm looking at each point and see if they, seeing if they work. And then in, he says, I mean, it's hard not to get frustrated with this, everybody. And I know nobody likes abortion, okay? But you can't tell somebody what to do. All right, friends, I just want you to think about that last statement for a moment. But you can't tell somebody what to do. I mean, she has rights over this. Of course, that's the question. He didn't establish that. This would be, I guess, the fetus. Especially if she doesn't like the guy that got her pregnant. Why does she have greater rights over this if she doesn't like the guy who got her pregnant? I don't get it. She doesn't want anything to do with your genes. Get over it, especially if she were raped and all this. So it's very frustrating on the outside, on the other side. We have so many more important things to be dealing with. We have so many more problems to squander resources on this argument based on bad science or just lack of understanding. And so his his final thoughts, nobody likes abortion, okay, but you can't tell somebody what to do. Um, Why is it that abortion is unlikable? I I actually never heard anybody say, you know, nobody likes appendectomies. No, it's not a social issue, right? Um, of course, I don't think people would like to have have to have an appendectomy, but you, you see that this is different. There's something about abortion that seems to be morally questionable, which is why even a person like Bill Nye says, well, look at when nobody likes abortions. And then he says, we can't tell people what to do, really. W- w- Bill, what is the purpose of your video? Are you telling us what to do in your video clip? Some of you might recognize the inherent suicidal tendencies of that statement. And the implication that a woman can do whatever she wants with her own body is just plain false. She cannot, no one can in a civilized society. So the complaint itself is built on a false premise. And we have so many more important things to be dealing with. Well, I guess that just depends on one's perspective. On 9-11, 2,977 people died. Well, that was a big deal. Here, what, 14 years later, we're still, we're still straining under the emotional impact of that loss. But do you know that's approximately the same number of children who lose their life every single day here in this country through abortion? What, hap- what would happen if we had planes crashing every single day for 40 years? The loss of roughly 3,000 per day, do you think he would say, you know, we have more important things to be dealing with? No, if this is the way pro-lifers say it is, the way they argue it is, not from the Bible, but from science and philosophy and morality, well, then this is huge. And Bill Nye's hand-waving dismissals don't change it one bit. For all of his concern about how we just don't get our facts right, bad science, lack of understanding, that was his last words there that I read to you. It is Bill Nye who hasn't gotten his science right and who is demonstrating, unfortunately, a deplorable lack of understanding of the, of the, the, the appropriate way to address this issue. Every one of his salvos completely misses the real target. And in fact, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful in any fashion, but this is the, gee, just about the worst piece of reasoning that I have seen anyone do who is otherwise intelligent and educated, which both are true of Bill Nye. But this, this is awful. And all you have to do is go to YouTube and listen for yourself. Jot down the points and then look at the points and see if his science is sound and whether his reasoning is sound. It's as simple as that. That's all that's required for critical thinking on this particular view. Now, it doesn't prove that abortion is wrong and pro-lifers are right. It means Bill Nye has not done a single thing uh, to demonstrate that that's the case. He's just embarrassed himself, I think, 
with the way he's argued.